I think the ETF and having people like Larry Fink, who is the head of BlackRock and Fidelity and these gigantic, massive American institutions, the asset managers, having them involved and sort of like backing it is a big deal. It gives a lot of people cover. And even if it is not quite regulated and banks can't even really deal with it, um, those big institutions getting involved, BlackRock, Billy, et cetera, uh, I think are really, really big moments. Wait a minute, everyone. Welcome to BitcoinZilla, your platform for daily cryptocurrency analysis and news. Our mission is to keep it simple. BitcoinZilla offers engaging information that is easy to understand. Our analysts keep their eyes on the latest news to provide valuable insights via email. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Join our community of 10,000 subscribers and experience the new edge with BitcoinZilla. Subscribe now. In today's video, Eric Galkunis discusses Bitcoin ETF and the trends in the ETF industry. Why Eric thinks that BlackRock ETF will have significant growth in Bitcoin adoption. Eric also gives a peek into his portfolio and shares some hot takes on the current state of investing in crypto. So without wasting any time, let's dive into the video. There's three main types of investors. Retail, there's like do-it-yourself people who have brokerage accounts. Then there's advisors. Financial advisors, they're like wealth managers. They, um, if you have a lot of money and need help with like taxes and estate planning and all that, they will help you and they'll like build your portfolio and whatnot. Those people manage $30 trillion in America. And that's where the bulk of the money is. That's the crowd this ETF is namely going after. And they love ETFs. Advisors, ETFs are their favorite vehicle to use for anything. So they're very comfortable with them. They trust them. They use BlackRock ETFs all the time. So that, to me, is the main market that would open up with the ETF for Bitcoin. Then you have institutions. This is like professional traders, hedge funds, um, endowments, pensions, big, gigantic asset owners. They are probably going to use the ETF, but they'll probably only use the one that's really liquid. They love liquidity. Um, and they will, I don't think they'll use it tremendously, but I, but there's, they have so much money that even if like a, if they 1% allocation, uh, that's a ton of money. Uh, so I would see that down the line, the owners of the Bitcoin ETF are, you know, maybe 20% retail, 60% um, advisors, and maybe another 20% institutional. But so advisors to me are, are the main market here. And again, 30 trillion is a ton of money. So if they just, if they were to apply just a 1% allocation to Bitcoin, um, it's gonna add up pretty quickly. Fidelity Digital Assets has revised its medium-term outlook for Bitcoin from positive to neutral following the first quarter, citing several metrics that suggest Bitcoin is no longer considered cheap amid a potential buildup of sell pressure. In its latest signals report released on April 22, Fidelity Digital Assets cited the Bitcoin yardstick, or hash rate yardstick, which works in the same way as the price-to-earnings ratio is used in stocks, except in this case, it is used to determine if Bitcoin is undervalued. Fidelity noted that the yardstick remained between a negative one and zero deviations from the mean of 51% in the first quarter, meaning there were zero days on Q1 where Bitcoin was considered cheap. This would suggest that Bitcoin is now trading at fair value, said Fidelity, which has now revised its medium-term outlook for Bitcoin to neutral. Other metrics it cited that added to its neutral outlook was the fact that long-term holders are adding to sell pressure while 99% of addresses are in profit, which could incentivize selling. The investment firm, however, has maintained its positive short-term outlook for Bitcoin, saying there was some potential for short-term profit-taking at the end of Q1 2024, but added there were no extreme indicators that are commonly seen during bull market peaks. The company cited price levels remaining above a golden cross on the Bitcoin chart, with the asset trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving averages throughout Q1 indicating bullish momentum. We believe on-chain indicators are now clearly above the lows or extreme bottoms previously observed. The report also referred to Bitcoin's realized price, a metric that aims to capture the average cost basis of all current coin holders. The realized price was around $28,000 at the close of Q1 and has maintained a position of support since mid-January. Kuiper said that we are nowhere near the historical extreme highs, before adding that this leaves us in a middle ground or halfway point of the market cycle. Historically, a disproportionate amount of price gains occurred in the latter half of the cycle. 
Bitcoin has remained range-bound since the end of February, oscillating between resistance at $72,000 and support at $60,000. However, it has gained 5% since the weekend halving event and is currently changing hands for a 10-day high of $66,000. So when the ETF flows came, if everybody had just hodled, the price would do God candles because there was only buying for a couple of weeks there. Big buying. Sometimes the ETFs are netting a billion a day. And, you know, people are selling now. So there are people in the crypto market who are, I just don't think they're going to let it go high. They're, they're going to, there's a, I think just people, like I said, there's people who are waiting to sell at different levels. And at the higher it goes, the more they'll be tempted to sell. So I don't, I, that said, this ETF catalyst is real. ETFs are, I dedicate my whole career to ETFs. They rule. They are the, you know, they say as a customer, you can only get two of these three things, fast, good, cheap, right? If it's fast and good, it's not cheap. If it's good and cheap, it's not fast. You get the idea. ETFs are all three. There's very few businesses. Amazon, I think is all three too. Like there's few things that are fast, good, cheap all at the same time. And this is why just being in the ETF it's only three months. Over time, this is definitely going to be a, a positive catalyst. It's going to bring new investors into the market. But in the short, medium term, I mean, who the hell knows? There's there's just so much. I keep learning new stuff every day. I would have thought it'd be higher from here. I was surprised at all of the waves of selling that have come along the way during the ETF flows. The people who should definitely buy their own Bitcoin to me are the ones that really see the, the sort of like maybe apocalyptic end game here where society collapses and it's like Mad Max Fury Road and like the person with the Bitcoin controls the water and all the people and it's like a dust it's like all dust out there and I call it the Mad Max uh, vision that you should own your own Bitcoin if you think it's going to come to something like that but for most people they just think it's a good hedge on the dollar devaluation or a fun speculative asset they don't care about the, that whole re religious side of it. They just want that. They're going to pick the ETF, and, and they should. Because BlackRock will always have the ETF at Coinbase. So you'll always be able to cash out in dollars. And that was another thing. People were like, well, people, how, you're only going to get dollars back. I'm like, no one wants Bitcoin back, dude. No one who would use the ETF wants Bitcoin back. They just want dollars back when they cash out. On Monday, April 22, the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF IBIT registered yet another inflow of $19.4 million, registering 70 consecutive days of inflows ever since launch. This puts BlackRock's IBIT ETF into the top 10 exchange-traded funds, recording the largest daily streak of inflows. So far, BlackRock's IBIT Bitcoin ETF has amassed more than $15.4 billion worth of Bitcoins as of its current price. While on the one hand, BlackRock has been recording continuous inflows. The Grayscale Bitcoin ETF has registered continuous outflows on the other hand. BlackRock's IBIT has been swiftly closing the gap with GBTC and could soon become the largest Bitcoin fund in the market. Earlier today, Bloomberg's senior ETF analyst Eric Balchunas shared a chart on X, highlighting the potential milestone for BlackRock's fund, IBIT. If IBIT manages to sustain its streak of 70 consecutive days of net inflows, it will join the ranks of some of the most successful exchange-traded funds in history. IBIT inflow streak currently at 69 days. One more day, and it moves into the top 10 and ties GT it as, Balchunas noted. The GT's exchange-traded fund, which holds shares in companies within the airline industry, has also achieved 70 consecutive days of inflows, as per Balchunas data. Prior to today, Jets held the 10th position in this regard. According to the Bloomberg Analyst Post, the JT Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF, JDPI, currently holds the record for the longest streak of daily inflows, standing at an impressive 160 consecutive days. And do not forget to subscribe to Bitcoin Seller. The most important news will reach your inbox on a daily basis and for free. I do not know why you have not subscribed yet. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power, and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing.